oral questions. Question oral, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Merci beaucoup. Le 1er janvier. On January 1st, the government increases, increased taxes on government's paychecks. On April 1st, it also planned to increase taxes on gas, heating, and groceries. Now, housing prices have doubled. Grocery prices are at their highest inflation rate in 40 years. Canadians just aren't able to pay. Will the Prime Minister cancel these tax increases on seniors and workers? The Honourable Minister, I'd like to start by congratulating the Honourable Leader of the Opposition on his first question in this role. Throughout this session, you will see two competing visions. Our plan as a government to support Canadians who need it most, and then the other option, the vision of the Conservative Party and members who don't care about Canadians. We've just seen more money for housing, the dental plan, and an increase in the TPS, in the GST credit, rather. That's money in the pockets of Canadians. Canadian. The minister says we don't care about Canadians, but who really doesn't care? The price of housing has doubled. Previously, Canadians could pay for housing with 32 percent of their paycheck, but that's gone up to 50 percent. Food prices are going up at the highest rate in 40 years. Canadians just can't pay for it, but this government wants to increase taxes on heating, on gas. Will this government do something to help Canadians pay their bills? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, let's talk about how people will be able to pay their bills. Thanks to our new dental care plan, there will be $1,160 for the GST for a single parent family, for seniors, $701 and for a couple with two children, $1,400. Mr. Speaker, we are here with a responsible plan to help Canadians where they are when they need it. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. We vaporized by inflation, which is costing families over $2,000 in extra costs. And that does not include the increased interest rate prices that people are paying on their mortgages. In fact, the average family could pay their housing bill with 32% of their paycheck every month. Now that's 50% after seven years of this Prime Minister in power. What's the solution? To raise taxes on paychecks with higher EI and CPP premiums that will shrink paychecks and higher taxes on gas, groceries and heat. Why won't they cancel these tax hikes so that Canadians can keep a roof over their heads? The Honourable Minister. It's important to talk about the fact that he's talking about EI and CPP, things that are important for people who've lost their jobs or for seniors when they're planning for retirement. But let's talk about real solutions, Mr. Speaker. We've brought in 13 agreements on child care across the country. By the end of this year, families will be saving 50 percent. That's thousands of dollars that are going to help them with the high cost of living. That's real solutions, Mr. Speaker, that are making real differences in the lives of Canadians every single day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Great job. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Can't even afford to have a family in the first place because they can't get out of their parents' basements or out of 400 square foot apartments after housing prices have literally doubled in this country under this Prime Minister. And now, with rising interest rates, which this government promised would not happen anytime soon, families have to spend 50% of their income just to keep a roof over their head, the highest in over three decades. And the solution from the Liberals? Higher taxes on gas, groceries and paychecks. Will they follow the Conservative demand and cancel all of these tax hikes on workers and seniors? The Honourable Minister. Uh, a 
absolutely focused on the issue of housing affordability in this country. That is why we've put forward real solutions like the Housing Accelerator Fund, which is about increasing more housing supply. It's about also turning more Canadian renters into homeowners. It's about introducing the first-time home buyer tax credit and um, putting in place a first-time home buyer savings account to enable more young Canadians and others to access their dream of home ownership. We can take the leader of the opposition seriously on these issues because on every single tangible solution that we've brought forward that actually works, he's voted against it. Full leader of the opposition. They work to double the price of housing in this country and give us the, the second worst housing bubble of any country on planet Earth. Now, Canadians have had the cost they must pay for monthly housing bills go from 32% of their paycheck to 50% of their paycheck. And what's the Prime Minister's solution? To reduce their paychecks by taking a bigger bite out of them with higher payroll taxes. And he wants to raise gas taxes, home heating taxes, and indirectly the price of groceries by tripling the carbon tax. Will the government cancel these tax hikes so that Canadians can afford to eat, heat, and house themselves? The Honourable Minister for Tourism. Mr. Speaker, over the course of this session, you're going to see two competing visions. One, which shows our government doing what needs to be done for Canadians as they are facing higher inflation. And the other vision... We had started so well. I just want to continue and make sure that everybody knows that when somebody's talking, we normally stay quiet, listen, and then we can ask questions or answer after. The Honourable Minister for Tourism, please, from the top. Mr. Speaker, throughout this session, you're going to see two competing visions. One, where our government focuses on the needs of Canadians, Conservatives telling the country that they're on their own. Just today, we introduced two pieces of legislation that will add $500 top up on housing, that will double the GST credit, that will put in place a Canada dental benefit. Mr. Speaker, these are targeted measures to Canadians who need it the most, when they need it the most, and our hope on this side of the aisle is that the Conservative Party will support us to get these measures to people as soon as they need it. Honorable Deputy de la Prairie. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Well, Mr. Speaker, we're very happy that we're back here because we really need to talk about guns. In Montreal, we've seen shootings almost every day. Last Tuesday, there were four shootings in a single evening. Mayor Valérie Plante has said, I don't control the main factor, that's the guns on our territory. And she asked the federal government a question. What is the government doing to protect us? to prevent these weapons from ending up in the hands of our youth. The Honourable Minister of Public Safety, Mr. Speaker, our thoughts are with the families of the victims. This is a very difficult time for Montrealers. We have excellent cooperation with Mayor Plant. I am constantly communicating with her and with my counterpart within the Quebec government. We have a plan on this side. With additional legislation, we will add resources. Since last year, we have invested $321 million to reinforce security at the border. We will continue to collaborate with Quebecers to protect our communities. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Well, based on what Mayor Plan said, I'm not sure that the cooperation level is so great. And the Minister is talking about legal weapons, but we need to take action against illegal weapons because what we're seeing in our streets is illegal weapons. And it's the federal government that's responsible for monitoring the border. It's all very well to bring more police officers to the streets, but when the guns are just flowing in over the borders, it doesn't really help. We're seeing shootings happen right in the middle of St. Dennis Street in schoolyards. When will this government do something? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, that's exactly why I hope the Bloc Québécois will support Bill C-21. In that bill, we are going to provide more tools to help police services deal with organized crime. And also, we will help people, we will help police services strengthen the border. We, were going, we are going to work with Quebec on that. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Living crisis, which is hurting people, 
and the liberals kept saying that it's not our fault and it's worse in other countries. And then we've got a leader of the opposition who thinks you can magically opt out of the inflation by buying cryptocurrency, which ended up tanking and hurting people. So you got say nothing and do nothing and new Democrats who force this government to put more money in your pockets. But my question is, what took this government so long to act when people needed respect and support? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today is indeed a great day for Canadians. We're talking about helping Canadians with the affordability of the cost of living right now by having a $500 top-up to the Canada Housing Benefit, introducing a new Canada Dental Benefit Plan, also making sure that we double the GST credit. Mr. Speaker, if we look at the 20 budget, the 2021 budget, the 2022 budget, this Liberal government has been making life more affordable for Canadians, including childcare, including the Canada Workers' Benefit. Mr. Speaker, this government is delivering for Canadians, and that's what Canadians expect. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Les coûts des épiceries ont augmenté. Grocery prices have gone up 10% on average, but CEOs of big grocery companies have raked in the profits. Their greed has contributed to inflation, and that's hurting families. When will this government force these CEOs to pay their fair share and reinvest? to help families, to help people throughout the country. The Honourable Minister of Tourism, Mr. Speaker, we have been and will be de determined to ensure that everyone pays their fair share of tax. We have increased income tax on corporations by 1.5 per cent for the biggest banks and insurance companies, and we have a recovery dividend of 15 per cent on excess profits made by these corporations during COVID. Mr. Speaker, we have a good tax plan with this government. The Liberal carbon tax is up 25% to $50 a tonne, and it doesn't just increase the cost of gas, it increases the cost of everything for Canadian families. Many Canadians pay more in carbon taxes than they get in tax rebates. And worse, they miss their targets, and by a lot. Inflation is out of control, and Canadians are struggling, and their plan is to triple the carbon tax. So, Mr. Speaker, will the government cancel its planned tax hikes? Yes or no? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, and just to the Honourable Member, we are fighting climate change and we are delivering on affordability. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Member will recall that the Parliamentary Budget Officer has confirmed the price and pollution will put more money in people's pockets. Eight out of ten families will get more back than they pay through the Climate Action Incentive. This year, Mr. Speaker, I would uh, remind the Honourable Member that a family of four will receive up to $745 in Ontario, $830 in Manitoba, and $1,100 each in Saskatchewan and Alberta. Mr. Speaker, we're fighting affordability and uh, <laughs> fostering affordability and fighting climate change. For Thornhill. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the, the parliamentary budget officer says that 60% of households in Ontario, in Alberta, in Saskatchewan, in Manitoba pay more than they get back. So it started at $30 a tonne, then it was $40 a tonne, now it's $50 a tonne, and they're on track to triple it to $170 a tonne. Emissions have gone up, the price of everything has also gone up, so I'll ask again when they plan to step out of fantasy land, join us in the real world, and admit that their plan to triple the carbon tax is wrong. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment. Well, Mr. Speaker, we know that climate change and the cost of inaction is absolutely enormous. Uh, we've been experiencing climate impacts all over the country, Mr. Speaker, and we have a practical and affordable way to reduce pollution. And while the Conservatives want to make pollution free again, Mr. Speaker, we're reducing uh, pollution, we're putting more money in people's pockets, and we are building the clean economy of the future. Honourable Member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. Mr. Speaker, thanks to the ever-increasing Liberal carbon tax, I'm receiving messages from Canadians across this country wondering how they're going to heat their homes and eat this winter. And now the Liberals are coming after workers' paychecks with CPP and EI increases. 
Canadians cannot afford this government taking any more of their money. They are desperate for relief from this high tax Liberal agenda. Mr. Speaker, it is a simple choice. Will the Liberals continue to punish hardworking Canadians? Or will they finally stop inflicting the pain and cancel their tax hikes? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, Mr. Speaker, we all, we've all heard the Leader of the Opposition calls uh, for uh, freedom. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I hope uh, the Honourable Member of the Opposition didn't mean the freedom to pollute. And while Conservatives want to make pollution free again, Mr. Speaker, again, we're reducing pollution, we're putting more monies in people's pocket, we're uh, creating the clean economy and good, clean jobs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. L'Honorable Député de Charbonne, Haute-Saint-Charles. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, since 2015, this Prime Minister's policies have has been hurting Canadians' pocketbooks. Currently, we're seeing the tax credit for children's sports activities being eliminated, while raising other taxes. He also promised that he would reduce rates on student loans, but now he's going to increase them. Can this Prime Minister promise not to increase taxes? The Honourable Minister of Family. Mr. Speaker, this year we signed 13 agreements with all the provinces and territories to reduce child care costs. That's thousands of dollars that will go back to parents' pockets to ensure that they can provide their children with what they need and to ensure that they can keep up with the cost of living. Mr. Speaker, we are focusing on families, and we will continue to do so. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute-Saint-Charles. Mr. Speaker, even before the pandemic, this Prime Minister spent more than any other Prime Minister in the history of Canada. His out-of-control spending has led, to, has led to roaring inflation, and now Canadians are paying exorbitant prices for goods and services. And now the Prime Minister will make it worse by hiking the carbon tax. This is going to hurt families who dream of buying a house one day. Will the Prime Minister promise to pause tax hikes? The Honourable Minister of Tourism. Mr. Speaker, today in this very House, we tabled two bills which will make the cost of living more affordable for Canadians. The dental care plan and an increase in housing benefits, as well as doubling the GST credit. In addition to all the measures in Budget 2022, we are here to support Canadians, Mr. Speaker. And that's exactly, that's exactly what we will continue to do. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are already struggling to keep up with record high cost of living expenses caused by this government's out of control spending, high risk economic policies and painful interest rate hikes. Many are forced to use credit cards and take out loans just to pay their bills and feed their families. In fact, new CPI data shows that grocery prices have risen by over 10 percent. That's a 40 year high. Canadians can't afford these Liberals' risky economic policies. Will the government commit to cancelling their plans tax hikes on Canadians? Yeah. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, let's be really clear. The riskiest advice that anybody in the House of Commons has given Canadians over the last six weeks is it putting their money into Bitcoin. Had Canadians done that, they would have lost their shirts. They would have destroyed their own personal finances. So our plan, Mr. Speaker, is a real plan that will help make life more affordable. $1,160 for single mothers, $700 for single seniors, $1,401 for couples with two children, and that's just the GST tax increase we're talking about, the credit for Canadians. That side can support us and do right by Canadians. L'honorable député de... The Honourable Member for Thérèse de Blainville. Mr. Speaker, the day we've been dreading for months is coming up. On September 25th, the temporary EI measures will end. And yet, the Minister has not yet presented her overall reform of the programme. We're back to the black hole. We're back to the programme that lets six out of ten workers fall through the cracks. We're back to the status quo. That's unacceptable. Mr. Speaker, September 25th is in five days. The minister needs to do something. What will she immediately do? Will, will she at least extend the temporary measures? The Honourable Minister. 
pandemic, we put in place temporary EI measures to help address the extraordinary economic circumstances at the time, shutdowns, lockdown, job losses. We continue to look, move forward um, with our economic policies. It's focusing on addressing labour shortages. It's focusing on making sure Canadians have money in their pockets, such as the increase of GST, the one-time GST Absolutely. credit, and the dental care program. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, um, Workers continue to have access to EI. Workers, continue, current, workers who are currently on EI um, are not impacted by anything moving forward. We are winding down COVID measures, but I can assure every worker in Canada that they still have access to EI. The Honourable Member for Thérèse de Blainville. Mr. Speaker, that is not true. And it's embarrassing that we are forced to ask the Minister to extend the temporary measures because she has not done her work. She needs to do an in-depth reform of EI. In fact, the Prime Minister himself told her so. It's clearly stated in her mandate letter. Not only was she supposed to create a plan, but she was supposed to have implemented it by summer 2022. But summer 2022 is already over. And the minister has once again come up empty. When will she finally introduce an in-depth reform of EI? <laughs> that seasonal workers are still struggling. We are extending the seasonal worker pilot to make sure that we address the trou noir. Mr. Speaker, we are committed to modernizing the EI system. We are working very hard through the consultations to make sure stakeholders have a say, workers and union and businesses. Everybody is at the table. I have committed to putting forth this vision by the end of this year, and we will do just that. Excellent. The Honourable Member for Thérèse de Blainville. Not yet. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, what is the minister waiting for before reforming EI? Seriously. We keep meeting workers' groups, and we've had so many consultations. We know what the problems are, and we know what the solutions are. The minister was told to do this in her mandate letter. What is she waiting for? Why is she abandoning workers? The Honourable Minister. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everybody in this House of our commitment to extend EI sickness benefits from 15 to 26 weeks. That will be in place by the end of the year. By the end of this year, workers will have access to 26 weeks of EI sickness benefits. The Honourable Member for Coast of Bay Central Notre Dame. Mr. Speaker, energy poverty in Atlantic Canada is nearly 40 percent, the highest in the country. Newfoundland and Labrador's Liberal Premier is begging the Prime Minister not to put carbon tax on home heating fuel. It will drive up heating costs by 20 percent. Winter care. is coming. Seniors will need to choose between food on the table or a warm home. Will the government pledge to cancel its planned tax hikes on my province's workers and seniors? Pledge today. Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment. Mr. Speaker, uh, our government understands the affordability concerns faced by Atlantic uh, Canadians, which is why the federal system is designed to put money back in the pockets of families. If the federal system is applied in the province of Newfoundland, of Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, we will uh, ensure that they receive the climate action incentive payments via quarterly checks, which, Mr. Speaker, will be in the mail in October. We remain committed to working in a collaborative, productive way with provincial counterparts to fight climate change while making life more affordable for Canadian families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Coast of Bay Central, Notre Dame. Mr. Speaker, Corey from Gander and many more like him aren't too impressed with that answer. Does this minister get it? Last year, Corey spent $4,000 on oil to heat his home. The Liberal carbon tax will add $700 to his annual heating bill. Corey considers himself middle class. But with inf these inflationary tax increases, he's worried about paying his bills. Again, I ask on behalf of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, and many of them voted for this Prime Minister, will he choose not to hurt them and cancel these planned tax hikes? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, we hear Canadians in Atlantic Canada and the issues that they have raised with respect to the cost of oil heating, which is in fact why just last week 
we announced a special program for Atlantic Canada in particular to help them transition from oil to, re to renewable energies to have cleaner, cheaper ways to heat their homes. We're there to support Canadians. We're there to support Atlantic Canadians. The Honourable Member for South Shore, St. Margaret's. Mr. Speaker, that minister doesn't know that that program only covers 3% of people in Atlanta, Canada. What are the other 97% supposed to do? Nova Scotia has surpassed the 2030 carbon reduction emission targets and will reach net zero by 2050 without a carbon tax. Nova Scotia is getting results with technology, not taxes. But why let outcomes drive your policy when you can increase taxes? The carbon tax will add 14 cents more a liter to home heating fuel when 40 percent of Atlantic Canadians are experiencing energy poverty. Will the Liberals listen to Premier Houston, implement his plan and commit to not imposing, not imposing the ineffective carbon tax? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, we have been there consistently to support Canadians as we transition to more affordable forms of energy for our homes. And like I mentioned, just last week we had a program that highlighted supports for Atlantic Canada. But more than that, we are working with the provinces, including Nova Scotia, on the Atlantic Loop, ways that we can provide affordable, clean energy. We are there. We will continue working with our provinces, including Atlantic Canada specifically. We are focused on that. Well, member for South Shore, St. Margaret's. So obviously the motto of this government is fighting affordability. Atlantic premiers are not being listened to. They are beating your targets. But you won't listen. Why is it you won't listen to government? Is it the government will listen. Will they listen? Is it because this government just wants more tax revenue, more money in the bank to spend on useless programs? When will they commit to not increasing taxes? Here, here. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, if the Honourable Member won't believe me, perhaps he'll believe the Parliamentary Budget Officer, perhaps he'll believe the uh, Commissioner on Environment and Sustainable Development. And the reality, Mr. Speaker, is the price on pollution puts more money in people's pockets. Eight out of ten families will receive more than they pay in through the Climate Action Incentive. Mr. Up the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, there's some folks right around my left ear here that I'm having a hard time hearing. I'm going to have to ask him to repeat. Start from the top, please, so I can hear the whole answer. Well, Mr. Speaker, I, I was just repeating what I said before. Eight out of ten uh, families were, were better, will be better off. Mr. Speaker, we're, we're fighting climate change. We're delivering on affordability in so many ways, as our Minister of Tourism has highlighted many, many times uh, today. Mr. Speaker, I, uh, surely the Conservative Party doesn't want to take money out of uh, people's pockets. And, Mr. Speaker, a family of four once again will receive 745 in Ontario, $830 in Manitoba and about $1,100 each in Saskatchewan, Manitoba. That's real money, Mr. Speaker, that is going to help with affordability. For Hamilton Centre. On Saturday, this Liberal government will change the rules for EI, making it harder for workers to get the benefits that they've earned. Canadian workers are caught between a rock and a hard place. On one side, we have the Liberals punishing workers by cutting EI and keeping their wages at rock bottom. And on the other side, we have Conservatives intent on abandoning workers altogether who are hardest hit by this economy. In a time when workers are struggling with the rising cost of living, this Liberal government government is choosing to make them suffer more. Will this Liberal government immediately stop the changes to EI and finally fix the broken system? The Honourable Minister of Employment. Speaker, as our COVID pandemic um, economic measures wind, wind down, I can assure everyone in this House that we continue to support workers, we continue to be there for workers, we are working very hard to modernize the EI system, EI sickness will be in place to 26 weeks by the end of this year. I'll also remind everyone here, pardon me, I'll also remind everyone here that we have recovered 113% of the jobs lost during the pandemic. We have incredibly low unemployment rate. Our economic rebound has been incredibly extraordinary given everything this world is going through at this time. The Honourable Member for Winnipeg Centre. Mr. Speaker, people are struggling with the rising cost of living. 
things are getting harder. Mr. Speaker, instead of helping, the Liberals are clawing back the Canada Child Benefit. And guess who will hit, be hit the hardest, Mr. Speaker? Single parent mothers struggling to make ends meet. This is cruel. Families need more support to pay rent and feed their children, not less. Will the Liberals reverse these clawbacks and ensure that families who receive pandemic supports are not unfairly penalized? The Honourable Minister for Families. Speaker. In fact, we understand the high cost of living, and in fact, when we came into office in 2015, we got rid of the universal child care benefit that the Conservatives were sending to millionaires and instead brought in the Canada Child Benefit that can provide almost up to $7,000 a year for children under the age of six for lowest income families. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, we raised the Canada Child Benefit this summer, indexed to inflation, because we understand how much families rely on this money to make sure that they can can give their children what they need. Mr. Speaker, we've been there for families and we'll keep being there. Thank you very much. The Honourable Member for Calgary Skyview. Mr. Speaker, last week the government announced the doubling of the GST credit as one of the measures to help vulnerable Canadians fight inflation. Can the Minister of Tourism and Associate Minister of Finance tell us more about this support measure? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member from Calgary Skyview for his excellent question. Mr. Speaker, just last week we announced the doubling of the GST and we put that legislation, we tabled that legislation today. So what does it mean? We're talking about a single mom with one child and $30,000 in net income getting $1,160 through that credit. A single senior with $20,000 in net income will get $701. A couple with two children, $35,000 in take-home pay, $1,401. That is real money in the pockets of real Canadians. That is responsible leadership. Member for Battleford, Lloyd Minster. Mr. Speaker, Canadians should feel confident that when they work hard, they will have a roof over their head and food on their table. But under this NDP Liberal government, Canadians are working harder and harder, but falling further and further behind. This government's uncontrolled spending is driving up the cost of living. And increased taxes, like the failed carbon tax, is diving deeper and deeper into their pockets. Mr. Speaker, when will this NDP Liberal government stop driving up costs and cutting the paychecks of Canadians? Mr. Speaker, the supports that we announced today are targeted to the Canadians who need it the most, vulnerable Canadians who need this help. And let me just share with you some information from Lindsay Teds, an economist at the University of Calgary, who has said very clearly that this is targeted to low-income individuals who are probably the ones unable to dip into savings or other things to pay for these increased costs. It is unlikely to increase inflation. Mr. Speaker, they're going to deflect and distract. We're going to keep delivering for Canadians. That's responsible leadership. The Honourable Member for Minot Éclairable. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 600,000 Quebecers use food banks in Quebec to feed themselves because they can't make ends meet. And amongst them, more and more workers, Mr. Speaker. The price increases everywhere cause inflation, and workers cannot deal with this. Groceries have gone up by more than 10 per cent. Will the Prime Minister finally commit to granting more money into people's pockets by ending all these new tax increases, Mr. Speaker? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, the supports that we have proposed starting today do exactly what the member opposite is talking about, putting money in the pockets of those who need it the most, whilst at the same time we have been working on inflation. Economists from coast to coast to coast have all said that our measures will not increase inflation. We are fighting for Canadians, supporting those who need it, while being fiscally prudent. The Honourable Member for Mégantic-Lérable. I would like to explain to my colleague what making ends meet means. It means having enough to survive to the next harvest season. Now it just means living from paycheck to paycheck. That's what it means today. But unfortunately, fewer and fewer Canadians manage to survive from paycheck to paycheck. Inflation, food, taxes, rent, gas, everything's more expensive. Instead of 
stressing Canadians out, can the Prime Minister at least stop implementing new measures that increase every price everywhere once again? The Honourable Minister for Tourism. Mr. Speaker, generally speaking, the measures that we have mentioned today and the measures in Budget 2022 are targeted to help Canadians who need it the most. With the dental plan, a $70,000 family will receive $650. Youth who are in a family that earns seventy to dollars to $90,000 will also receive a significant amount. Mr. Speaker, that is real money in Canadians' pockets. The Honourable Member from Montmagny, lille camorasca rivière du loup Mr. Speaker, Stats Canada has informed us that inflation is still north of 7%. Do you know why, Mr. Speaker? This government's failures and its incomprehension of how economics work. So long as this Liberal NDP coalition exists, Canadians and Quebecers will suffer from this inflation. Will the Liberals at least commit to cancelling tax increases? If not, then why? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, these measures will not increase inflation. It will support those who require it. We are targeting Canadians who are in greatest needs. Trevor Toomby, an economist, clearly stated that global factors and the Government of Canada's incidents will not have a big effect. These are economists saying this. They are saying that our plan is a prudent plan with regards to budgets and fiscality. The Honourable Member for Drummond. Mr. Speaker, it's not easy for Quebec's uh, music industry these days. The starving royalties that our mu musicians receive from streaming music sites, the two-year pandemic that has prevented festivals and concerts from taking place. And to add to all of this, Francophone artists have lost income due to a calculation error by SOCAN. This is yet another tile falling on the head of Quebec's music industry. In this context, Francophone artists really did not need this. Can the Minister send a clear message to our artists that, in the face of adversity, they can count on the Minister? The Honourable Minister for Canadian Heritage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would also like to thank my colleague for all the work he does with regards to Canadian heritage and with regard to our artists. And I would like to clearly state that our artists, be they Anglophone or Francophone, should all be treated in a just and equitable way. This is a principle that should be respected by everyone, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Drummond. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Minister for Heritage has no doubt read the article by Thomas Gerbeff from Radio-Canada. I quote, Quebec francophone artists estimate that from 2019 to 2021, they had a 45% shortfall due to a calculation method used by SOCAN. Since the 21st of November 2021, the situation has been corrected, but no compensation has been provided by them to compensate francophone artists. The Minister has a moral duty at the end of the day to ensure that francophone artists are, treat are treated fairly. What does he intend to do to show his support for artists? The Honourable Minister. What I seek to do, Mr. Speaker, is to be clear, as I have been just a few minutes ago, and to repeat once again, Mr. Speaker, that our artists, be they Anglophone or Francophones, should always, always, always be treated in the same way. And that is a principle that should be respected by everyone. End of discussion. Member for Regina Capel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The cost of government is driving up the cost of living. A half trilli trillion dollars of liberal inflationary deficits have bid up the cost of the goods we buy and the interest we pay. Inflation is running at historic highs and taking a massive bite out of Canadians' ability to pay the bills. Now, if you thought it couldn't get much worse, you'd be wrong, because the Liberals are planning on raising taxes on Canadians' paychecks by hiking CPP and EI premiums. Instead of making the problem worse, will the government commit to cancelling its planned tax hikes and cancel its tripling of the carbon tax? The Honourable Minister of Employment. 
Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we're a bit hesitant to take advice from that side on EI, considering that the leader, the leader of the opposition, when he was in charge of EI in 2015, had, oh, let's say the current leader, um, when he was in charge of EI in 2015, workers paid 20 percent more into EI than they do today in a system that wasn't as generous as, as it is today. The Honourable Member for Regina Capel. Well, Mr. Speaker, the new measures proposed by the government will just get vaporized by continued sustained inflation. It's the cost of government that's driving up the cost of living. Food is up 10 percent year over year, and four out of uh, four out of ten Canadians are cutting their diets because of rising food costs. Canadians who have never used a food bank in their lives before are being forced to because they simply can't keep up with soaring prices. Canadi Canadians are struggling to get by, and the government plans to raise taxes on gas, home heating, groceries, and paychecks. Will the government reverse its planned tax hikes and commit to no new taxes? The Honourable Minister for Tourism. Mr. Speaker, I'll tell you what was vaporized. Canadian savings when they followed the new Conservative leader's advice to go put money into Bitcoin. Quite frankly, shameful, irresponsible and reckless. Wow. <laughs> member for Regina Capel. What's been vaporized is Canadians' purchasing power as this government has caused the record-breaking inflation that is hammering Canadians' abilities to make ends meet, Mr. Speaker. The best way to stop inflation is to put an end to the deficits that caused it in the first place. Instead, the Liberals are going to make the problem a whole lot worse. Rising prices have robbed Canadians of the ability to heat their homes and fill their fridges. And in the coming new year, the government is planning on hiking payroll taxes and carbon taxes, meaning Canadians will have to spend more as they take home less. Will the government simply cancel their planned tax hikes? The Honourable Minister. Let's go through the numbers through the years. In 2015, when we lowered income taxes on Canadians, that member and that bench voted against. In 2019, when we lowered taxes for Canadians again, the Conservative leader and that bench voted against. In 2021, when we lowered taxes for working Canadians, that side of the aisle voted against. And even this summer, when we reduced taxes on businesses, once again, the Conservatives in this House voted against taxes. We know who has the record on having Canadians' backs on taxes, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Chateau Gay Lacal. Mr. Speaker, dental care is often not affordable for families. The Minister announced last week that the first legislative measures from the government this autumn will make life more affordable for Canadians who need it the most. Mr. Speaker, can the Minister of Health tell this House how the government is delivering on its promises to Canadians with regards to dental care. The Honourable Minister for Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And first of all, congratulations to the member for chateau for her excellent work, for her riding. Great news today, a new Canada dental benefit that will help 500,000 children in low to middle class settings with an amount of $650 a year, 1,300 over three years, or over two years, to help people who are in low and middle class settings. Also, helping healthcare in general by reducing dental issues. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Shikujimi Le Fjord. Mr. Speaker, for two years, Liberals are being informed about the dangers of inflation. But according to them, there was nothing to fear. But today, we are in an, a liberal inflation maelstrom. Many Canadians are saying that they wouldn't be able to pay a surprise expenditure of $1,000. Many Canadians are scared about their debt level. Many Canadians have to choose between gas and food. Can the Liberals guarantee that they will not increase taxes? The Honourable Minister for Tourism. Mr. Speaker, four times over the last six years, Conservatives have voted against tax cuts offered by the Liberals. Measures we've implemented our table today are targeted for Canadians who need it the most. These are targeted measures. We will add money for housing. We'll create a Canada dental plan. We will double the GST tax credit. Real money 
in Canadians' pockets. Kelowna Lake Country. Mr. Speaker, small businesses will be among the hardest hit by planned Liberal tax hikes. First, the planned payroll tax increase forces them to pay more taxes on wages. Second, the Liberal plan to triple the carbon tax. While large industrial corporations don't pay the carbon tax at all, small businesses will see their energy costs skyrocket, forcing them to charge more to consumers and pay less to workers. Will the government cancel these new tax hikes so small businesses can survive? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, let me outline what we've done for small businesses during the past two and a half years. We've supported small businesses throughout a pandemic. What we've also done, and a matter I'm sure the member opposite is very concerned about, is support small businesses in their inclusivity with the Women's Entrepreneurship Program. We've launched a Black Entrepreneurship Program. We're supporting Indigenous businesses. The Conservative record on supporting small businesses leaves a little bit to be desired. When we've proposed rebates for small businesses, they've opposed them in, vote, in their voting record. When small businesses in this city were under siege by an by an illegal blockade, the man who's now the leader of the opposition supported the, that blockade and the impediments it caused to those small businesses. That's the, the Conservatives' record. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Lakeland. Mr. Speaker, Canada is the fifth largest natural gas producer, but doesn't export any LNG. The world wants Canadian LNG, but these Liberal gatekeepers killed 16 projects, 100,000 jobs, and forced Canada to import. Worse, after this Prime Minister's snub, Germany may do a deal with Saudi Arabia instead. Sure. Canada could be the sixth largest LNG exporter if all the projects were built and replace all Russian LNG to Europe, Japan, and South Korea. Why do these Liberals always export Canadian paychecks and projects to foreign dictators? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, last month we welcomed the German Chancellor to Canada. And you know what we are exporting? Hydrogen, critical minerals. And you know what we're creating right here at home? Good paying, sustainable jobs. We came, we had conversations with the Chancellor, we responded to what they need, and we will be there to support our allies while supporting Canadian jobs. The Honourable Member for Don Valley East. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. In my riding, Don Valley East, many are struggling with increased rent and housing costs, especially working individuals, families, and the most vulnerable. And there is no question, Mr. Speaker, that more help is needed and that our government must continue to act. Can the I'm sure the minister wants to hear the question. I couldn't. I'll have to ask the honourable member to start from the top, please. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate it. In my riding, Don Valley East, many people are struggling with increased rent and housing costs, especially, Mr. Speaker, families, working individuals, and the most vulnerable. And there is no question, Mr. Speaker, that help is needed and that our government must continue to act. Can the Minister of Housing, Diversity and Inclusion please tell this House what new measures our government is putting in place to help families through this difficult time. Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the Honourable Member for Don Valley East for his important question. We know that it's getting harder for many Canadians to afford the increased rent. That is why today we introduced legislation to provide a $500 federal top-up to the Canada Housing Benefit. This will help 1.8 million low-income Canadians, and this will be on top of the already existing, on average, $2,500 of the Canada Housing Benefit. On this side of the House, Mr. Speaker, we will always have the backs of Canadian renters. The Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni. Mr. Speaker, this summer, 21 families a day buried their loved ones because of the toxic drug crisis. This is devastating, but it was foreseeable. The Public Health Agency of Canada warned that this crisis could continue to get worse. This is just weeks after the Liberals and Conservatives both voted against an NDP bill to create a national health-based strategy. So instead of supporting real solutions, the Liberals' inaction has cost lives. When will the Liberals fix their mistakes by creating a national health-based strategy to fight this crisis? Here, here. The Honourable Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And we obviously are devastated by this news of every day so many Canadians dying of mental health issues, issues which can be cared for and prevented for by for, for with the reasons and examples that the member just gave. So
So we are invested, we're investing and very mindful of the need to invest in the mental health of Canadians. My colleague, Minister of, of Mental Health, is working very hard on that. She's announced many measures and more will come. Yeah. No point of orders during question period. Reserve them until after. I know we're all a little bit rusty after all the rules. The Honourable Member for Victoria. Mr. Speaker, Scott Graham, a senior from my riding, is missing. He was last seen in Spain at the Canadian Embassy, visibly injured and without life-saving medication. His daughters feel like they've been left to investigate on their own. Scott reached out for help. But Canada's system to support people in an emergency failed. When Canadians go to their embassy, they expect to get help. When loved ones go missing abroad, they expect real action for families. What is the minister doing to support the family while making sure this never happens again? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I want to assure the, uh, the Honourable Member that we are very concerned for the well-being of Mr. Graham. The consular officials, both here in Ottawa as well as in Spain, have taken this very seriously and will continue to uh, uh, advise us as we continue to uh, search for information about his well-being and uh, be in contact with his friends and family as well. Uh, the minister has asked for a complete understanding of, of how the department and how the uh, embassy have uh, dealt with this situation, and we are happy to report back to the House at a later date. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for question period today. C'est tout le temps. I wish to draw the attention, and we'll come to the point of order right after I'm done, I promise. I wish to draw the attention of members to the 30th anniversary of CPAC. The Cable Public Affairs Channel, CPAC, has been broadcasting the debates of the House gavel to gavel for three decades. The ball created... First established in 1992 by consortium of 27 Canadian cable companies, CPAC's primary mandate was to broadcast the proceedings of the House of Commons to millions of cable households at no cost to the taxpayer. Since then, CPAC has expanded to provide continued unfiltered coverage of House of Commons proceedings and parliamentary committees, as well as a multitude of other public affairs activities across the country. Despite the rapidly advancing forms of social and digital communications, CPAC continues to play a key role in keeping our fellow citizens informed about the business of Parliament. CPAC has worked in close partnership with us to ensure that Canadians have a front row view into the very heart of our democracy. CPAC, occup CPAC has become such an important part of Canadian political life that it is truly difficult to imagine that such an essential service did not always exist. Today, we welcome to the gallery the members of the CPAC Board of Directors. On behalf of all members of Parliament, I want to thank them for the invaluable contribution they make to the Canadian democratic process. Thank you very much.